All right, make sure your wizards are on. Grab the combo box. This is in the toolbox if you're still using Axis 2003. This works exactly the same. I want the combo box to look up values in a table or query. Next. All right. Now, where am I getting my list of values? I'm getting my list of criteria from my criteria table. Next. What do I want to see? I want ID. I want criteria name. And I want points. Bring points into the box. Why? I'll show you in a few minutes. All right, you want to see points in there. Next. What do you want to sort by? Well, this is up to you. Do you want to sort it by name or by the number of points? Let's sort it by points. All right, next. Here's your list of criteria. All right, we can shrink this up if you want to. Next. Store the value in what field? Well, let's do size first, cat size. All right. Next, what label would you like? All right, size. This is just a label that goes with it, so colon. And then finish. All right, here's my combo box for my size. All right, category size. And if you save it, I'm going to save this as my project F. All right, take a peek. Here's my size. Now I can pick my size. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting all of the values in here. Well, that's what we told Access to do. I said, give me a list of all my criteria. But I only want to see criteria for a specific category. What category? Size. Okay, and how do I know what the category is? Well, if I come over here to my category table and open it up, size is category 1. So wouldn't it be nice if I could tell this combo box, hey, only show me category 1. Well, what you can do is go back to design view, open this guy's properties up, now, when the wizard creates the properties, it creates a row source right here. And that's an SQL statement. All right, we covered this in Access 202. It's an SQL statement, structured query language. All right, select some fields from some table, and then you can have an order by or a where clause. All right, we covered this in Access 202, and then we did a lot more with SQL in my 300 level classes. But all we need to do is modify this row source and add in here a WHERE clause so that I can select what category. All right, so here's select criteria t dot id comma criteria name comma points from criteria t. And I'm going to put right in here, I'm going to say WHERE category id equals 1. And then a space and then the order by clause. And that should give me just category 1. Category ID, by the way, is also in the criteria table. That's why I wanted to make sure it was in there as well. Now when I save my form and go back to form view, look at this. Size, drop it down. Oh, look at that. Small, medium, and large. Click on large, and now it's saved. Now we'll do the same exact thing for the other categories. In fact, I'll just copy and paste this combo box. I'll cheat. All right, here I am. I'll just pick cat size, copy and paste. All right, what's the next category? Let me open up my categories here. We got location. I'll just move that to the bottom. All right, let's do location next. And I'll open this guy up. What do I got to change in here? Well, the row source is the same, except for the category ID is changing, right? Cat 2. And right here, the control source is no longer cat size, but cat location. Remember, the control source, I'll move it over so you can see it. The control source is what field am I saving this data into? Well, it's cat location in the project table. The row source doesn't change. It's still a list of criteria. All I have to do is change the category ID. All right, let's see if this works. I'll save it and go back to view here. Location, drop it down. Oh, there we go, Buffalo. Now, like I said, ideally, in a better solution, you'd have this as a subform. And then you could have any number of criteria in here and, and categories. And you'd pick the category and then pick the criteria. But you get into some really crazy situations with two combo boxes in a, in a subform like that. So I initially started playing with it to see if that'd be a better and easier solution for you. But it started getting into some real heavy VBA code, which I don't think you're ready for if you're a beginner slash intermediate user. Um, after finishing all my 300 level classes, maybe you can go back through and, uh, and try something like that. But I think the solution will work fine for most instances. Because if your categories themselves don't change, right, size, location, market, all that stuff, if those don't change often, this solution's fine. Only if you're adding and deleting a lot of categories often do you really have to, to change the way we're doing this. Because 
Now we just have to make more combo boxes for each of our categories. And this is something that the developer has to do. Market. All right, open this up. This is now cat market. And this is now category three. And that's all. That's all you have to do to change this stuff. All right, copy, paste. And once this is set up, it should work fine for you. Timing. All right, cat timing. And this is now category five. Okay. And like I said, if, as long as you don't add and delete or change these categories often, then this should work okay. All right, pick a market. Pick the timing. Okay, see how that works? And now as you go to the next project, you just select what you want to select. All right, next project. Go back to these projects. All right, and this is made easier because this is all in one table. If you want to change your locations, if you want to add more locations, that's easy to do. Close the project form, open up criteria. All right. Now you could make a separate form that would show these as this as a combo box. All right. So you can change stuff in here. But knowing locations right here is category two. And again, this is something you, the developer, would do. You could add another one down here, right? Los Angeles and points. Let's say would be uh, five. All right. And that's category two. Again, you could make another form where you have a combo box over here. That's not hard to do. You should be able to figure that out. But now, as you can see, the new locations in the system. All right, so adding this stuff, adding the criteria, the new entries over here, changing these points is not hard to do. You can do that in the table. And there's only one table for the criteria instead of having 40 different ones, like I think you said you were building. Now, how do you add up the points? Well, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure the points were in the combo boxes, because now we can just refer to the column property of the combo boxes. All right, in Access 302, I showed you how to access the column property of a combo box when we worked on our order entry system, so we can pull products into our table, right? We put all the stuff into a product combo box, hit the Add Product button, and it puts it up here into the order form, the line item details. Well, this combo box up here has three columns in it, right? Column count is three. There's three columns. What do we got? We got an ID, a name, and points, right? One, two, three. Now, columns, unfortunately, are labeled zero, one, and two. They start at zero. So that's column zero, column one, and column two. So I should be able to get the points for each of these boxes by referencing the column two property. And this avoids having to use DLOOKUP. You could use DLOOKUP. That's fine, too. But DLOOKUP is a little bit slower. It's a function. requires a little bit more work. All right. This way, I can just add up all the column twos. Okay. The first thing that I want to do, however, is I want to make sure all my combo boxes here have good names, because this is still combo 18. We never named these. All right. So let's come in here into the properties. All right. There's cat size combo. All right. Here's cat location combo. And I'm just copying and pasting. All right, there's cat market combo. And this guy's cat timing combo. All right, let's add a text box down here that we're going to add all these up in. All right, so I'll come up to my ribbon here and get the text box. Drop a text box down here. I'm just going to get rid of the label because we'll know this is points. There's my points. All right, I'll name this guy points. Now, the control source. Let's just get one of them first. Equals cat size combo dot column open parentheses two. All right, the third column is column two. All right, now when you hit tab, it actually throws brackets around some of the stuff, and that's okay. And now when I go into form view, notice this is a 20 because this is medium. If I change it to small, look at that, it's bound. All right, it automatically recalculates. No programming necessary. If I go to a different record, all right, that one's blank. If I drop this down, let's change it to small. There's a 10. Okay, and those guys are blank. All right, now let's add up two of them. And yeah, there's some weird stuff that's going to happen in a minute. Watch this. Plus cat location combo dot column two. Let's see what happens. 